you know, this idea from religious fundamentalists and so on that, you know, pretty much anything that isn't part of their religion is, you know, whatever, is the work of the devil. And, you know, again, that's, <laughs> you know, another marketing kind of thing for these, for these religions because they get to rally against an enemy. They get to, uh, you know, uh, do the kind of marketing where you go, well, are you tired of, you know, all of the evil in the world? Well, come join us, you know. Um, you know, it's the same kind of marketing is saying, uh, you know, all the other carpet dealers in our town are, you know, sell you the crappy carpets, you know, so come buy ours. <laughs> yeah, um, they just try to reframe it. Right. Well, you know, it's just not to say that you know, I'm talking specifically about the kind of fundamentalist religion. There, there, there are people who, who are Christians and Jews and Muslims and so on who, who are very spiritual people and are there because they're they're getting some understanding of the world from, from their practices. And that's, a, that's a very different thing than the people who go around condemning other people's practices. Yeah. Um, so, and, and the, you know, things like the word occult itself. Uh, occult really just means hidden, right? If you're an astronomer and uh, a celestial body is occult, it means it's hidden behind something else. And uh, essentially, in our modern terms, we might use the, the, the term unconscious. Right? I mean, it's, it's information that's somehow hidden from your normal conscious mind. And uh, the whole uh, idea of you know, certain things being, being a cult is that it's, it's an attempt to kind of reveal information about yourself and about the world and, and so on. So, you know, even saying this, I'm sure people are going to go, oh, you, you know, trying to candy coat the, the work of the devil here. You know, not much I can say to people who, who believe that kind of thing, but, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, other than, you know, actually if you go and read the books and, and so on, even, even the, the, the much reviled Alistair Crowley, if you actually go read his books, it's, uh, he's, he's talking about what he considered light magic and about trying to help the human race and, and evolve and so on. So um, there's public perception about things, and then there's <laughs> what they really are. That's probably uh, better than I could ever describe. And plus, I would imagine that you've been practicing uh, a lot of this stuff a lot longer than I have. Sure, and, and uh, I mean, I've been doing this for many years now, and you know, thirty something years. And, and uh, the, you know, I, I encounter this kind of stuff, you know, all the time. And, and even even today, you know, on the internet, I'd be on uh, an NLP site or or even a magic site or something like that. And then you, you get people who who come on and you know, with preconceptions about what stuff is without actually doing any kind of research other than just repeating what they've been told about things. I was reading about a seminar or training, uh, it's a Richard Bandler, it might be a Richard Bandler and a John Lavelle training. They had magic in the title, so I don't know if it's, um, if it's about more kind of ritual work. Well, um, yeah, I, I know uh, Richard Bandler has, uh, uh, he's come out of the closet a little bit more about being interested in magic. Years ago, in uh, 95 or 96 or something, when I, I first met him, I gave him a copy of my first book, Future Ritual, and uh, you know, I came up to him, I was kind of shy about it. I hadn't met Richard Bandler before, and I was, you know, wow. And, uh, you know, I, I said, you know, I, I want to, I'd like to give you a copy of my, my book because you were certainly an influence on it and an inspiration. And so he, he gives me this, you know, look like, oh, geez, another person handing me it. And he looks at the title and he breaks out in a big grin and he says, he says, oh, a book on magic. Thank you. I thought it was going to be another NLP book. So he's like, great. They're not trying to piggyback off of me. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, you know, even though there's NLP in there, and he's, he's enjoyed my, uh, my other books too. And, uh, uh, so, uh, I, and I know from uh, talking to him a little bit and, and with other people who uh, were around in the early days of NLP that, that Richard uh, actually had, he had studied magic and so on. And, um, his uh, previous wife, uh, Paula, who died a few years ago, um, she was very, very interested in magic. And uh, when I would go to Richard's uh, seminars and stuff, she would, kind of, she would grab me and kind of put, pull me off to the side and want to talk magic and stuff. Um, uh, you know, I said, wow. Maybe a little later. I'm here. I don't want to miss the seminar. Hey, I don't want to. I don't want to miss all the stuff you got nested loops and metaphors. I don't want to miss all this. <laughs> That's right. In your book, Meta Magic, uh, the book of Atem, you mentioned mm -hmm. that there's six elements of Atem. Could you describe what Atem is and what these six elements are? Okay. 
Um, I'm going to do this quickly because I am running out of time here. Uh, but uh, Optem is, a, is essentially uh, a mimetic entity. Uh, mimetics is the idea uh, or the, the study of how information passes from human to human. And most of the things we think of as, I don't know, gods, goddesses, schools of thought, philosophies, religions, corporations, and so on. These can all be considered mimetic entities. They're really just ideas uh, that involve a whole lot of people and that spread from, from one person or one group of persons to another. Right? So if you think of something like democracy, right? at one point, maybe a couple hundred years ago, <clears throat> there were only a few democracies in the world. But the idea of democracy spread throughout the world to the point where most nations now are, are democracies. Um, so, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's an example of, of one of these entities, right? And, you know, back in the old day, we used to, you know, people used to create statues to, you know, and here in New York, you go look in the harbor, there's that big Lady Liberty, right? She's a, an embodiment, a personification of this idea of liberty, uh, which spread, that was given to us by France, who were very concerned with liberty and their revolutions and so on. So anyway, Atem is <coughs> an entity who's there to help us learn about mimetics and entities. And uh, uh, Optum has really six components, which are attention, language, passion, fitting, trance, and making. Now, some of these are kind of parallel to NLP ideas or hypnosis ideas. Um, attention is just what it sounds like. It's how we focus our consciousness, what, what we're giving our consciousness to. Um, for instance, you're, you're listening to my voice right now. That's where your attention is going. Uh, language, we, uh, we have to use language, and, and it's a little wider than, than just written language or spoken language. So I like in NLP, uh, we're talking more about how we represent our thoughts and our ideas and so on. Um, and that's one way that we, we communicate, one way we direct our attention, one way ideas spread. Uh, probably the most important way that ideas spread is through language. Uh, passion, that's the energy, the, the excitement that you give to something that makes it worth spreading, right? Why did democracy spread? Because people were, they had passion about it. They were angry at their kings and despots and, and, and excited about having their own rule. Um, fitting, fitting is uh, akin to the NLP idea of rapport, or in hypnosis, the idea of rapport. Um, but it's a little bit, uh, we'll extend it a little bit further. It's the idea that uh, for something to work, you need to understand enough about it and kind of become part of it enough that you can influence it, right? Like a key in a lock. The key has to fit closely enough to the lock or exactly enough to the lock or the lock's not going to turn, right? So in our interactions with each other, um, I can only influence you, for instance, if I speak your language, um, if we have some basis of communication, our ideas are similar enough, uh, and so on, right? Or if you want to use the NLP kind of ideas, uh, if we're using the same representational systems and we're matching our body postures and so on. Uh, trance. Trance is all about states of consciousness. We're always in some kind of trance. Uh, we get to choose what kind of trance it is. And uh, so all of these, these ideas of magic and how we're communicating ideas and so on, they're all dependent on our states of consciousness. And, and also the state of consciousness is something that we are using these mimetic tools to communicate, to spread to each other. Um, and the final one is uh, making. And uh, making is really the idea that, I don't know, uh, the idea of manifesting, of making something happen. Right? But it's a little bit more than that because to make something happen, you also have to know that it has happened. You have to have some means of measuring it. So it's not just that I've thought of something and made it happen, but you look back and see that you've done it uh, in a sense. Um, there's, a, there's tests involved to know that you've made something happen, um, which uh, for the most part is actually missing uh, from um, a lot of traditional magic where people just, they do something, they focus on something and think of something. It's like the, um, the secret, the law of attraction kind of thing where people just, well, I've been thinking good thoughts, you know, uh, what, something good needs to happen to me now, but how do, how do you even define that? You have to be able to define what something good is and to know how to measure it when it gets there. Uh, so um, that's basically the, the basic pieces that go to make up the entity Atem. Uh, the way that, uh, let's see, using the, the democracy example again, uh, democracy would have its own component parts, which would be the individual voting, um, suffrage, the, the right to vote, 
and so on, the, the structure of who's, who gets voted for, you know, are we voting for senators or congressmen or whatever, the different pieces that fit together. Um, so you can actually, one of the ideas that, that Optum perpetuates is that you can take any one of these mimetic entities and kind of break it down into its component parts and understand it a little bit, uh, a little bit better and make it a little bit more useful. Phil has an upcoming MedMagic class on Kauai that's coming March on the 19th and the 20th. Phil, can you um, tell my listeners what they can expect to experience when they come to this training? Well, we're going to cover some of the basics of MetaMagic. That is, uh, everyone who comes there is going to learn some basic magical skills about changing your own consciousness, changing your life, changing the world around you. Uh, the, uh, it's actually uh, the 19th and 20th, March 19th and 20th, uh, is the, um, uh, the spring equinox. And uh, we're going to do it's traditional and uh, traditional magic to use some of those points of the uh, the calendar to help align ourselves with the world. So we're going to do uh, some ritual based in that. Um, there's a lot of real basic pieces of neurolinguistic programming uh, and hypnosis that come into this. Uh, so somebody coming there is going to come away with a, a very nice set of tools to manage your own states of consciousness and your own life. I may also, given uh, if I have a little bit more time on the island there, uh, I may also add in, as you suggested, a, uh, uh, a hypnotherapy course. So actually, some of the metamagic pieces are just absolutely wonderful pieces to use in hypnotherapy in a, uh, in a one-on-one practice as well. Uh, so and I'll talk about that in the course of the class. Um, but the, the basics of transinduction and so on, some of that will be in the course. And maybe we can also do a little bit uh, and uh, offer some uh, society for experiential trans certifications as well. Definitely. You know, I, as someone who, um, uh, Mr. Farber, for taking the time out of his uh, fairly busy lifestyle and his uh, private practice to come in talk about his uh, large body of work. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. And I hope to talk to you again soon. Oh, definitely. Well, see you in March. You can also find us on the internet at these locations, facebook.com forward slash Hawaii hypnosis, twitter.com forward slash Hawaii hypnosis, and myspace.com forward slash Hawaii hypnosis. Thanks for listening.